Hey everybody, welcome back to Chronic Woodwork. I'm Andy, and today is episode six in my series of videos on how to build a cedar strip canoe. Today we are gonna attach and shape the outside stem as well as cutting the curve for our rocker. Should be pretty fun. Hang tight, here we go. began this phase of the project by grabbing my outside stems and just cleaning them up with the block plane. I had a little bit of epoxy squeeze out from when I laminated them up. Then I took my random orbit sander and cleaned up the ends of my canoe. I'm just trying to get rid of any really rough edges because we're going to take this outside stem and cap off the end of the canoe. After both the outside stem and the end of the canoe were cleaned up, I brought the outside stem over to the canoe and just etched the outline of the outside stem onto the canoe. I'm going to use this as a reference uh, for my chisel because part of the outside stem is actually going to be embedded into our cedar strips. I am by no means an expert on hand tools, so I'll post a link in my description below for a video that taught me how to sharpen hand tools. Once my chisels were really sharp, or at least as sharp as I could get them, I started notching out the shape on the canoe. You'll see I'm taking real small chunks here, and you want to sneak up on a fit. As always, we want to err on the side of caution. Going to chisel a little bit away, test fit, chisel a little bit away, test fit again. Just rinse and repeat with this process until you're satisfied with the fit. I will admit I was a little bit nervous about this portion of the project, but I really increased my level of comfort with hand tools and learning is really what it's all about. After removing the appropriate amount of cedar strips to embed my outside stem, I realized I still had a little bit of spring back in my outside stem. So I'm gonna use some epoxy and then countersink some screws to hold it in place while the epoxy dries. Once again, I'm using West Systems Epoxy. While it certainly isn't cheap, I can't imagine anything that's much more user friendly. I use some of the thickener to make it more of a glue texture and just brush this onto the end of the canoe before attaching my outside stem. I repeated this entire process on the other end of the canoe and then filled my countersink holes with some simple 3H inch dowels that you can buy from a big box store. I just applied a dab of glue, tapped in the dowel with a little hammer, waited for it to dry, and then came back and cut it flush with the surface. Once the epoxy attaching the outside stems was set, I decided to do some rough shaping with my chisel. I didn't want to leave my outside stems all square and bulky, so I rounded off the edges and made sure the bottom of the outside stem kind of tapered into the shape of the canoe. Once I was roughly satisfied with the shape of my outside stem, I moved on to cutting the curve for my rocker. I decided to use a jigsaw to cut my curve so I removed any staples that were going to be in the way. Next I took a long batten and just stretched it from my fourth station mold all the way to my stem station mold. I clamped it in place and then just used a pencil to etch that shape onto the canoe itself. I removed the batten and inspected the curve one more time. I was happy enough so I got my jigsaw, took a deep breath, and made my first cut. If you follow this method be advised it's going to be awkward when you approach station molds because your jigsaw is going to have to cut through those MDF station molds on the back side of the cedar strips. Okay, so you just saw me make the very first rocker curve using this thin batten. And all I did was just kind of clamp it in position uh, to a curve that was appealing to my eye. Nothing too fancy. The tricky part is going to be transposing this curve onto the other three corners of the canoe. So in order to do that, I'm gonna take a big framing square and place it against this mold station. Then you're gonna take a simple combo square place it against the framing square and just come up till you make contact with the curve of the rocker. And then you can get a reading, a height reading off your framing square. We're gonna repeat that process for each of the station molds uh, and then take those measurements and move to each corner of the canoe and repeat the curve. So that's the way ahead, here we go. To repeat the rocker curve, I took measurements at station six, five, four, and three. I made sure to write all these measurements down because I'm just not that smart. I then moved to each corner of the canoe and repeated the process, which was removing the staples, marking my measurements at each station mold for six, five, four, and three, clamping the batten in place, etching a line, and then taking my jigsaw and actually cutting the curve. This may seem like a pretty simple and repetitive process, but I definitely got nervous every single time I took my jigsaw 
towards my canoe. Just do your best to remain calm and stick to the steps. I should note that depending on the style of canoe you're building, you may have to finish off your cut with a little handsaw. Once all four corners of the canoe are complete, I'm going to consider this phase of the project complete. Next time we're going to remove all the remaining staples, sand the entire hole down, and prepare it for fiberglass. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.